Do you want Instagrammers or TikTokers to post about your brand? Or do you actually want to engage creators who influence their audience to buy your product? If you're in the latter of those two, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for tuning in to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. We got a special episode today for a couple of reasons. First, my pal Jay Bear has new research out on the time to win. It's a fascinating study on how responsiveness in all its variations really can be the difference between getting new business and not, and keeping business and not. Jay and I came up together as social media talking heads, if you will, his Convince and Convert blog and his awesome insights and ideas about social media marketing catapulted him to become one of the most sought after speakers in the marketing space. His work took him through several themes and best-selling books, but has sort of always revolved around customer service, customer care, customer experience in one form or another. His book, Hug Your Haters, was a fantastic look at how the social media customer care theory of engaging those who slam you online became an instant handbook for customer experience professionals. He followed that with perhaps the best book ever written about word of mouth marketing. It's called Talk Triggers. I refer to it a lot and even included some of the research from it in my book. One of the fundamental things that makes Jay's books far more thorough and impressive than mine or those of many others is they are typically based upon a foundation of original research. Hell of a formula to write best-selling books if you can muster it. And Jay can. He's good at it. For his next big act, Jay has done original research around that topic of brand responsiveness. And the ideas and insights he's sharing as part of his speaking engagements and webinars these days Eh, books probably in the offing, but those insights are fascinating and inspiring for all brands and businesses. Now, I invited Jay to join me to talk about the time to win on a recent episode of The Rise, the community commerce marketing show. That podcast and streaming video show is the second reason this episode of Winfluence is a little bit of a treat. I've not shared a lot about my other podcast here, so this gives me the impetus to do so. As you all know, I took the challenge of becoming the Executive Vice President for Marketing at Scipio.ai in November. We've since launched a content strategy to help educate the market, and that means all of you, on the concept of community commerce marketing. That is, activities that help brands grow by working through the brand's community of customers, fans, followers, employees, and more as a starting point. The Rise, the Community Commerce Marketing Show, is Scipio.ai's weekly interview series with thought leaders and experts from the world of marketing, business, sales, e-commerce, and community building. The underlying focus is to make the audience smarter about leveraging community to drive their brand's growth. Influence marketing is a part of it. Scipio.ai even has a dandy influence marketing software solution that starts with your brand community as influencers. But the show goes beyond that into topics we wouldn't normally cover here on Winfluence. Now, you can subscribe to The Rise at scipio.ai slash podcast or by searching for The Rise, the community commerce marketing show, wherever you get your podcasts. The shows also stream each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on scipio.ai's LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter channels. I often simulcast it on my Twitter channel, too. Make a note on your calendar to check it out Wednesdays, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, if you are interested. Today, though, I'm going to play the episode of The Rise from a couple weeks back when Jay Bear came on to talk about the time to win. Those of you watching will see a replay of that stream in full Technicolor. Those of you listening on the podcast feed will hear the full episode as well. I'll come on after, as I usually do on Winfluence, to share some final thoughts. So prepare yourselves after the break, you're going to come back to different music and a different show as we share the time to win and Jay Bear's episode of The Rise, the community commerce marketing show. That's next on Winfluence. <laughs> Thank you. 
If your brand could use more effective and efficient ways to ignite growth, you've come to the right place. This is where smart marketers learn to leverage their own community to ignite growth and sales awareness and beyond. Welcome to The Rise, the Community Commerce Marketing Show. I am your host, Jason Falls. We are exploring the new and exciting category of marketing strategy, automation, and software called Community Commerce Marketing. Big treat for you all today on the program, not just, just because we have an amazing guest, but he brings with him amazing insights. Jay Bear is here today to share with us some insights around the time to win. His new research and keynote presentation, Lighting Up the Conference Circus, is all about how the fastest businesses to serve customers succeed far more than those that lag. Certainly helpful for your business, regardless of the segment or customer you serve. Before we get to Jay's time, though, please take a moment of your time, if you haven't already, to follow and subscribe to The Rise. This is a new streaming video show and podcast from Scipio.ai, the leading community commerce marketing platform. Follow Scipio.ai on LinkedIn or YouTube for the live show. Of course, we also post the audio as a podcast after, so subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Our goal with the live show is to make efficient use of your time. So we like to dive right in. Jay Bear is a National Speakers Association Hall of Famer, multiple book bestselling author, and now in an interesting side hustle has become the number two most followed, liked, listened to tequila influencer in the world. He's sober today, longtime friend and prince of plaid. Jay Bo, welcome to the rise. Mr. Falls, great to be here. I was seduced by the opening animation to the show. Very lovely. It was very well, well, well done. Uh, indeed, I, I am sober. It is uh, it is morning time uh, as we're, we're putting this together. But I should also say that I'm the number two most popular tequila influencer in the world, colon, non-celebrity division, right? So you got, you got like The Rock, <laughs> right, you've got right. Clooney, you've gotcha. got Kendall Jenner, and then you get the other category, which is like me and a couple other dudes. Um, right. But, yeah. Well, as as anyone who follows this show or Winfluence, my other podcast knows, I do not qualify celebrities as influencers. So you're number two, bro. <laughs> it's, it's Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate it. the sales data might uh, indicate otherwise, but I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So the time to win is yeah. your new go to topic. I know this is an evolution of your focus on customer experience mm -hmm. as a broad expertise. Your your path of subject matters took you through the now revolution to utility and to hug your haters, which was a great customer experience, customer service book. Then Talk Triggers came along, which mm -hmm. in my estimation is the best book on word of mouth marketing ever. Uh, what in all that exploration and research sent you down the time to win rabbit hole? Was there a piece of data, a specific moment or insight that kicked that door down for you? I mean, first of all the books I've written, every book ever has had at least a chapter on speed. So this idea that that responsiveness is one of the best things you can do in a business has, has always been part of my work. But for sure, this is the deepest I've ever done on the topic. And the answer to why is COVID, the COVIDs. Okay. Uh, what I what I observed coming out of the pandemic w was that, geez, we've got all these trends that we're talking about now. We've got you know quiet quitting and the Great Resignation and leisure travel and work from home and all these different things. And my observation was like, you know what? These are all the same trend. Mm -hmm. And the trend is that we care more about our time and how we spend it than we did before the pandemic. What the pandemic was sort of forced upon us was this, this realization that nothing is promised, right? We, we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And consequently, we take a little more seriously, do we wanna spend our time doing this? Do we wanna spend our time doing something different? You saw a lot of people who are very successful, just take this job and shove it. <laughs> like, I don't wanna spend my time like this anymore. I wanna spend more time with my kids. I wanna spend more time surfing. I wanna spend more time drinking tequila. What we discovered, and we're sort of forced to discover, I guess, by the pandemic is that each and every one of us, Jason, has just 1,440 minutes a day. And you can't make more and you can't buy more. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Elon Musk or someone experiencing homelessness. It doesn't matter if you're a grandfather, a grandson, an American, a Venezuelan. We all have 1,440 minutes per day, period. And we care more about how we use those minutes than we used to. And so consequently, the research that I conducted found that speed and responsiveness is a more important component of customer experience than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And I would argue, and the data would back this up largely, that it is the most important element of customer experience. In fact, two thirds of customers say that speed is as important as price. Mm. 
that's that's big. Uh, that's very big because you would certainly intuitively think the other way around. But uh, but I can't. I mean, it, you're, you don't have to convince me. That's time is money, right? Time is money. That's the it, thing. It sounds that's, logical. You know, there's a, there's a reason. There's a saying for that. So so in 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 this research and in in the things that I've heard you talk about um, with regard to time to win, you said that customers interpret speed as caring. Mm-hmm. I, I'm curious if that level of affinity changes when the product or service changes, because a fast food hamburger is now a bathroom yeah. remodel is not. Um, not really, because it's the, the, the key to this is not necessarily the actual elapsed time. The key to succeeding with this strategy in your business is understanding customer expectations around time. Okay. And then being better than they expect. So even in fast food, right? It, you know, you expect it to be pretty quick. It's in the name, right? It's mm-hmm. called fast food. Even in that category, you can still dominate. Now, McDonald's and Arby's and Burger King and Wendy's and what have you are all pretty, pretty speedy, right? That's kind of the way they've built their business. But then you've got a company like Pal's Sudden Service, which is a Tennessee-based uh, fast food franchise, mostly burgers and hot dogs, uh, 100 and so locations. The industry average across all fast food for drive through mm-hmm. is 76 seconds, Jason. So 76 seconds from when you go to the order board and then you get your bag. 76 seconds. That's the average. Where, where, wait a minute. Where's this happening? Because it's not happening in Louisville, <laughs> I know. Kentucky. Well, I mean, maybe not. <laughs> Could be a Louisville thing. 76 seconds is the national average. Pals a sudden service. 20 seconds. Get out of town. 20 seconds. <laughs> Now, How do they do that? <laughs> well, partially it's a limited menu, right? So it's kind of like an in and out okay. burger. They don't have that many things. And they literally have built the entire business around this premise of being fast. Well, Jimmy John's, right? Freaky fast delivery. Yeah. It's called Pal's Sudden Service, right? So they've kind of committed to it. It's in the name of the business. <laughs> and so what people always ask me when I talk about that brand is they're like, well, sure, it's 20 seconds, but you probably ordered onion rings and you get fries or there's, you didn't want pickles and there's pickles. It's probably a train wreck. Check this out. Not only are they the fastest in the industry, number one in order accuracy in the country. Wow. So it's not about how much faster you are. It's about how much faster you are than your customers expect. So obviously, they expect you to be faster with a cheeseburger than with a bathroom remodel. But there's an expectation for for both of those. And, And if you can exceed that expectation... That's where the magic lies. And we talked about, you know, speed being interpreted as caring. This happens to everybody. So I had to get a painter not long ago. And I got three bids, as as one does. First painter called me back in four hours. Second painter called me back in a day. Third painter called me back in two days. Jason, which painter did I hire? The one who called you back quicker. Yeah. And he was the most expensive painter of the three. (laughs) But it doesn't matter for this reason. We all play this game in our head, and it has implications for every kind of business. If it takes them a long time to get back to you before they have your money, Mm -hmm. how long will it take them to get back to you once they have your money? Mm -hmm. So we interpret speed as caring. They want the job more. That's how we look at it. And here's the part that's really insidious and why this is such a critical concept for business right now. If you're painter two or painter three who didn't get the job, Why do you think you didn't get the job? Ah, You think it was price because that's the natural human reaction. So the next time a bid comes along, you drop your price a little bit. Like, man, things are getting competitive out there. And you still don't get it because you're equally slow. You're just cheaper. The third time a bid comes along, you drop your price again. And you still don't get it. You're cheaper, but you're still too slow. Only on the fourth time, when you're so inexpensive that somebody is willing to wait, do you get the job? And now you've literally evaporated all of your profit margin. When you lose on speed, it is almost always invisible to the business, which is why it is such a critical and insidious part of company success. Crazy. Makes perfect sense, though. All right, let's talk a little bit about the variations by consumer group. I think Mm -hmm. you created something called the uh, urgency index that we can look at here to help brands know what different generational groups expect. Talk us through this and how you came up with it. So this research is pretty significant. It's it's a 30-page report. You can get it at thetimetowin.com. Thousands of consumers surveyed, pegged to the census, all that kind of thing. And this, what we're looking at here is, is one of the big surprises in the research. So I've got two uh, children, 
and and uh, like you, Jason, they they are of an era where they grew up with social media and rapidity and texts, text messages and all that. So my assumption was that when we research which generation has the most patience versus the least patience, my assumption was that the youngest generation, Gen Z, would have the least amount of patience. And it's the exact opposite. Turns out the generation that has the least amount of tolerance for delay when they're working with business are the baby boomers. <laughs> and the most patient generation are the younger consumers. Now, why is that true? I don't know why it's true. Somebody sort of mentioned to me they thought maybe it's because baby boomers have less time left, so that time is more important, which <laughs> seems a little maudlin, but perhaps is true. Uh, maybe. And and maybe young people don't have as much to do. They don't have as, as many... Uh, leases on on their time so it's not as critical to them if they have to wait i don't know why but i was shocked at these findings yeah yeah those that's that's pretty amazing when i look at that number 59 percent on boomers and gen x is not much uh, further behind and i'm sort yeah. of i guess on the on the the first part of the gen x i keep thinking uh, yeah that's that proves uh, true for me because i'm essentially becoming a cranky bastard yeah and uh, and so i'm I working into that age group where i just don't have any patience anymore Yep. Uh, and maybe you've been disappointed so many times by business <laughs> that that eventually you're just like, you know what, I'm 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 up to here. You just don't give people the benefit uh, of the doubt anymore. But I'll tell you one of the best ways you can you can solve for this is by closing down the uncertainty gap. Again, raw speed is important, but expectation management is more important. So first of all, you got to set expectations for for customers or prospective customers so they they know what they're getting into. Uh, and and second, if there's any kind of a, a process by which your customer has to wait, they've got to wait for an appointment, they've got to wait for an invoice, they got to wait for shipping, anything that has a gap of time, it is so inc incredibly important to make sure that they know exactly what's going on, right? So that the Domino's pizza tracker. Uh, for example, where's the pizza? Well, it's we just put sauce on it. Now it's in a truck and now it's coming to your house. Jason, you and I both remember a time, and it wasn't that long ago, when we didn't have Uber and Lyft. Right. <laughs> and if you needed to get transport, you would call a taxi company. Mm -hmm. Every single taxi cab would have a phone number written on it, typically 222-2222. <laughs> so you just keep pressing twos until somebody, you know, hello. Uh, and you're like, yeah, can I get a, a cab? Where are you? You know, I'm at Monroe and third. Okay, he'll be there. When is the cab coming? We don't know. What will the cab look like? We don't know. <laughs> How long will it take to get to my destination? No idea. How much will it cost to go on this ride? Mm -hmm. Not a clue. Versus now, Uber and Lyft, you see the icon of the car the entire time. Five minutes, four minutes, three minutes. You know exactly how much it's going to cost before you ever get in. You've got the license plate number of the car. You can see him driving like, why is he turning there? What an idiot, right? You're literally following along. Now, what that does is closes the uncertainty gap, right? Which eliminates angst and anxiety in the minds of the consumer. And that lesson, how that industry has been transformed, applies to every industry. You've got to make sure that the customer knows what's happening uh, and that keeps their, their kettle off boil. That's that's amazing. And as, as you were telling that story, I was actually thinking about the the one uh, restaurant or experience that I've had lately that has turned me into a cranky bastard. Uh, and I don't mind to throw them under the bus because I've thrown them under the, under the bus on <laughs> social for years now. Uh, I love Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, everything about the experience, except for the customer service, except for the mm. service in general. And I have literally gone into my local Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, Springhurst location in Louisville, Kentucky, if anybody's listening from the brand. Um, and I've set a timer on my phone to judge how long it takes from the time I'm sat at my table until someone asks me for a drink order. I've, I've clocked as long as 15 and a half minutes. Wow. Just sitting there waiting for someone to take my drink order, not my food order. That's too long. Um, the last time that I, when I finally gave up on them, I was there the other night and I had about an hour uh, to eat before I had to go pick my daughter up at an event. And so I went in, I sat down, I placed my order within the first 10 minutes. Cause I sat at the bar. Cause I know better not to go to the, you know, wait on somebody to take my drink order at the table. Um, and 58 minutes later, the bartenders came to me and said, can you remind me what you ordered? And I just, oh. went, you know what? No, I can't. And I just walked out and I was like, I'm sorry. I, I give up. I love the experience. I love their food, but I won't go there anymore. And, and, and you, you nailed it. 
when you just walked out and now you won't go back. Mm -hmm. And again, that will show up on no report. None. There is no data that the brand or the individual location can access that shows how they have failed in that regard. I, I was in a hotel not long ago with a couple of buddies. We're doing a mastermind group and there's five of us and we were going to get something to eat. And somebody said, well, let's just get room service um, so we can just keep talking. And then the guy whose room it was said, no, don't get room service. I got room service yesterday and it took 75 minutes. We don't have that kind of time. Let's just go across the street to the restaurant. So we did. And it was like five guys and a bunch of different stuff. It was, you know, I don't know, $150. And in room service, it would have been 200 plus dollars. Mm -hmm. They lost 200 plus dollars because they were slow the day before. And they literally have no idea and they will never have any idea. Yeah, that's true. Well, invent a software that gives them the idea, damn it. That's what your next phase in life is, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would just be drinking tequila, buddy. I don't know. Well, okay, that's fine too. <laughs> All right, so the perfect amount of time in a customer interaction changes based on the product, the generation, mm -hmm. other factors. I think you call it being a little a little bit faster than your yeah. customers expect. How do brands and marketers map and measure that to know their customer expectation and the performance they need to shoot for? Let me just contextualize this briefly. You can be too fast. Okay. I don't want the takeaway to this conversation to be, be as fast as possible at all times because speed at all costs has a cost. There are circumstances, imagine the opposite of your Buffalo Wild Wings scenario. Mm -hmm. I was at a Mexican food restaurant not long ago, ordered some enchiladas and the enchiladas showed up in like 90 seconds. And I was like, hey man, is there an enchilada machine that you're using or did somebody else already order these and sent them back? And they're like on the pass, like waited for the next guy to order them. Like this is suspiciously quick. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be the fastest tattoo artist. You don't want to be the fastest divorce attorney. Like there are some businesses where speed actually decays trust. Mm -hmm. And so what you want is what I call the right now. And the right now is the Goldilocks elapsed time. It's just slightly faster than your customers expect. Not vastly faster, right. because then they're like, wait a second, something's <laughs> up here. Just slightly faster. And so one of the best ways to get at the right now is to figure out how long does it take you today? And that seems incredibly obvious. But Jason, you've been a consultant forever. You know this as well as I do, if not more so. Brands don't know. If you ask Buffalo Wild Wings at that location, how long does it take you to take a drink order? Yeah, They have no idea. No. They don't measure it. What they have is a collection of stories. Well, usually it takes us this long. Well, I didn't ask you about usually. How long does it actually take you? Mm -hmm. So until you know how long it takes you to do everything today, how long does it take them to order? How long does it take them to get the food? How long does it take them to pay? How long does it take them to um, take a, a takeout order? Until you actually document and measure all the different steps in your customer experience, you can't figure out what is optimal and therefore do one better than that. So the first thing to do is actually commit to doing the math. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. So our focus at Scipio, as you know, tries to filter everything through the lens of your brand community. So the yeah. time to win idea is, is really more about the functional transactional piece of this. But isn't that really the first part of building a strong brand community is delivering that utility of function? So you have a, a chance of grabbing a customer's attention, then their business, then their loyalty and beyond? For sure. Yeah. I mean, if, if you can't get the customer and you can't keep the customer because you are slower than they expect, uh, there is no community to, uh, community to create. But I would argue that, that these work uh, hand in glove in, in one scenario. One of the key recommendations that I have coming out of this research is to offer your customers a fast pass. In the report, we found that 25% of your customers, so one in four, yep. will pay up to 50% more for immediate service. Mm. Now, there are fast passes in society. We're familiar with them. Uh, TSA Pre is a fast pass. Pay more, save time. Uh, Disney World has a fast pass. I think they call it Lightning Lane now. Pay more, wait less. But every business should offer a fast pass. Scipio should offer a fast pass for onboarding new customers. Mm. I offer a fast pass for tequila reviews. I get sent tons of bottles of tequila every week and say, well, it's going to take me eight weeks to get to this review. Or if you want me to review it next week, it's this amount of money. Mm. 
right? It doesn't matter if you're, you know, doing oil changes or you've got an online course or you're an insurance agent or it doesn't matter what business you're in, you should offer this fast pass. And those who take advantage of that fast pass can in and of themselves be a special part of your brand community. Well, again, the point here for everybody to take away is it all goes hand in hand for successful marketing, not just the time to win, but certainly building community as well. Great advice and insights. Uh, Jay, before I let you go, uh, uh, tell folks about Tequila Jay. Where can I, where can we find that content if we're interested? Yeah, you bet. The report is at thetimetowin.com. Uh, Tequila Jay Bear content for videos a week on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, Instagram handle is Tequila Jay Bear. Uh, and on TikTok, it's uh, tequila. Jay. Awesome. That's my little contribution to helping you go from number two to number one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> you got to get the, uh, and also, uh, where, uh, you, you I, th- I know you threw out some links there. Yeah. Uh, where can folks see you, you talk in, in the, the near future? Where's time to win going to be coming to stages at a big marketing conference or something? Yeah. Like um, I'm doing some time to win content and also talking about my tequila journey at uh, Joe Polizzi's Creator Economy Expo okay. coming up in uh, in Cleveland uh, this spring uh, and B2B uh, Marketing Exchange in Phoenix coming up soon as well, talking about some of these issues. And then I've got a, a, a lot of events this year uh, with one of my uh, partners at Chase Bank. So I'm going to do a 25 city tour with them. Uh, so if you're a Chase Bank customer uh, in some of the major cities, you'll probably get an invitation to come see me. That's awesome, man. Well, good for you. And uh, I hope everybody gets a chance to come out and see the talk. There's a lot more to it. And of course, the time to win.com is where you can grab that report. We'll, we'll drop links to uh, all of those things in the comments here on the stream and on the stream for you uh, watching on LinkedIn or YouTube. If you're listening on the audio podcast on demand, find the post by looking for Scipio AI on LinkedIn or YouTube. Jay, always great to catch up with you. Always appreciate the insights and the work. Appreciate you being here, man. Oh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. All right. Jay Bear, everybody. How about that? Uh, Go get that research. Again, we'll drop the links in the show notes uh, and the comments on the stream for you guys watching uh, here live. Uh, We'll have those uh, social posts. We'll obviously stay up there with the replay so you can go grab those links whenever you want. Quick note for everyone listening, we're going to be hosting a free webinar on Friday called Unlocking the Power of Community Influence to Grow Your Brand. It's a look at our concept of uh, influence marketing through your own brand community. The live webinar is 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And just like this podcast, we've created it. So it'll be 20, 30 minutes tops, including Q&A time, trying to make efficient use of your time during the day. Register for free at bit.ly slash community influence. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash community influence. Do join us. We'll show you a little of our SIM platform in there too, community influence marketing platform. You'll get some new ideas on how to approach influence marketing a bit more efficiently and effectively than you've likely thought before. Want to thank everyone for joining us for The Rise, the community commerce marketing show, where we document the rise of the exciting new category of marketing strategy, automation, and software that is community commerce marketing. We know you want to bring community commerce marketing strategies to your business. Just visit us at Scipio.ai and hit the demo button in the upper right. Rise is a production of Scipio.ai. Be sure to follow us on LinkedIn or YouTube so you never miss the broadcast. You can also subscribe to the show's audio on demand. Just search for the Rise Community Commerce Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for being a part of our community. We'll see you soon on another episode of the Rise, the Community Commerce Marketing Show. And that, my friends, was an episode of The Rise, the Community Commerce Marketing Show, a new weekly video and audio program hosted by me and available by following Scipio.ai on LinkedIn or YouTube. You can also subscribe to the audio version on demand wherever you get your podcasts. We've also built a handy menu that makes that easier, though. Just go to Scipio.ai, that's C-I-P-I-O dot A-I slash podcast for a quick subscription link to Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. And thanks again to Jay Bear for the continued knowledge and mind share. He is one of the good ones, folks. If you enjoy Winfluence, help us grow and tell someone about the show. You probably know someone who might want to know more about influence marketing. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on them all. The show is now on video as well. Just look for Jason Falls Winfluence on YouTube to see the show as well as hear it. 
Windfluence is a production of Falls and Partners and presented by Scipio.ai. The technical production is by MPN Studios. Windfluence airs along MPN, the marketing podcast network. Thanks for listening, folks. Let's talk again soon on Windfluence.